cost that I lose, we'll have a program there. I think it's 6 o'clock, 6.30. 6.30. 28. And followed by 29th, my room model issue. Okay. Something was, I was thinking while on the way, and a question was asked. Jagdish Prabhu and Hari Priyasi was there in the room about King Mujkunda. You heard of him? No one? So Krishna, just a little brief background. <coughs> Krishna killed so many demons. Agasur, Vakasur, Vyamasur, Keshi, all this Asur and also dinosaurs. Also dinosaur. We just dis we just discovered today. Anyway, he killed so many Asuras there. And that was not only purpose for Krishna to be in Braj, but he was reciprocating with all his associates, which are categorized in four rasas. Dasyaras means those who are servitor of Krishna. Sakyaras, those who are friends of Krishna. Vasalyaras, those who are parents. Yishwada, Maya, Nandbaba, and especially Vrindavan, Gopis, and Radharani. On the top of that, Radharani. That love which is unparalleled. And the top post. I spoke so many days on this topic during Radharashmi time. And I heard from devotees here, they heard translation also. Yeah. So much I said about uh, Radharani's glories those days. But I am focusing on something else today. Krishna was invited to Mathura. Welcome. Come here. He was in Mathura. I mean, Krishna sent by comes a very cool with the intention with the intent to kill Kamsa wants to kill Krishna. So therefore he sent a Krura. Krura means cruel and a Krura means one who is not cruel. Mm -hmm. The name say a Krura. Akrura came and he gave this proposal to Nand Maharaj and Nand Baba immediately said, no, I will not allow Krishna to go Mathura because Kamsa is very cruel. You don't want him to even look at my son. But Akrura tried to console him and pacify him, inspired him, saying, if you won't do this, it will be a big consequence. Anyhow, big conversation, cutting short. Finally, Nan Maharaj agreed on this point that I'm not going to send Krishna alone, I will also go there. And when Nan Maharaj said, I will also go there, then everyone said, we all also go in Mathura because we can't live without Krishna. Why Krishna has to leave the place of his love? the object of his love, that is Sri Vrindavan Vajranda. His life invests in Radharani. His life is in Vrindavan. He himself claimed, O Rathe, to me more jeevan a jeevan. You are the life of my life. I can't live without you. Then why Krishna then? He agreed and shown so much inspiration to see Kamsa. Primary reason and secondary reason. Secondary reason, he really wanted to remove the burden of the heart. And Kamsa was a big burden, a demon. And he has a complete army of demons. <coughs> so Krishna wanted to kill the leader of the demons, which is Kamsa. But another reason, very important, is to enhance the separation of his beloved ones 
And why it is so important? Because our scripture says, Rupa Goswami part explains, Vena Vipralambena Sambho Pushni Vashamita. You know, just like I have this cloth, <coughs> when Mataji the Prabhupada, he washed this cloth, it got fade after three or four wash. Then we have to re dye this to look, make it more brighter. <coughs> So Rupa Goswami Padre gave an example, just like a cloth is getting, it, uh, you know, they die again and again and becomes more brighter. Similarly, the separation enhances the union. If there is always a union, that flow of prema gets very regular and normal. But when there is some blockage, or it get stopped for some reason, then the flow of frame that crushed into three times more speed. So separation enhance union. That's the formula. <coughs> and Vrindavan, Raj Mandal, this formula is very much applicable and very important. <coughs> to enhance the love towards him, Krishna designed all this. Go to Matka and then Dwarka. In the separation of Krishna, everyone is crying and weeping, longing for him, want to see him. Especially, as I said, on the top is Radharani. She can't resist without Krishna. Wherever she is glancing, she reminds, him, reminds her of Krishna. That Tamal tree, which is blackish in complexion, reminds Radharani of Krishna. So she goes and she embraces, in madness, she embraces that Tamar tree. When she sees the clouds, she runs, calling out Krishna. Krishna wants to embrace those clouds. When she sees peacock, also blackish, bluish complexion, she runs to embrace that peacock. This is called Man in love. Separation enhance that union. It's not that Krishna wants to put all of his Brajvasis, means the inhabitants of Vrindavan, in the fire of separation, but whereas he also wants to taste this food of separation. It's not that only they are weeping and crying, but Krishna is also weeping and crying. In other words, they both are tasting this. The both parties. Is this in the taste? Yes. Separation, in separation, one remembers one object of love more than in union. There is so much respect and regard when there is separation. When there is union, there is always a chance of losing that respect because everything gets so regular. Understand? This mood of separation is a very dormant state in the eternal abode, Golo Vrindavan. It is just like a river. A comparison is given just like a river. Oh, sorry, a pond. A pond has no waves. A pond just is like, you know, regular, same water just flowing in. But when you throw a stone in the pond, what happens? Ripples. So that stream of love is stagnant. When you throw a stone in that, it's a ripples. So ripples, when ripples get created in the pond, it appears so beautiful. And the ripples start from the point where the stone is thrown and it goes all the way, touch the edges. This is how frame is described. This is called, when there is complete union, Understanding the point? In Golok Vrindava it is like this. So that's why more varieties are required to enhance that love. To develop that love, to enhance that love. And that's why 
Krishna comes with his associates here in on this planet, in Shri Vrindavan Dham. And the pastimes of Krishna here in Vrindavan Dham is not like a pond, it's like a river. And the beauty of river is? Close, and also some, not com I say waves like an ocean, but still there is some moments. In the world. When the pastime of Krishna grows a little more, and that grows only when there is separation. So it's not that when he's out of Vrindavan there is separation, also when he is in Vrindavan there is also separation. Because no one has complete 24 hour separation. No one. Everyone has some slots. Vishwadama has some slot in the morning. She decorated Krishna, sent Krishna with accounts. Then she starts feeling separation. But the union with the animals, with the birds, deer, that's what I, when I see deer in the morning, I remember this past time. The deer, they are waiting for Krishna to come. But after a while, Krishna gave more attention to the cows and to his friends, Sakas. But gopis are feeling separation. But when the time will come? And what is that time? 3.30. 3.30. <laughs> that gopis are waiting for Krishna. <clears throat> this longing is one kind of separation. And that longing means already there is union because you are remem remembering that person. Understanding some little point here? It's a little complicated. So there are three kinds of separation, or I can say there are three kinds of longing. Bhavi Bhuta Bhavan. Specifically, the names are given to them. When Akrura came to coming back to the story, otherwise my mind stream will go in another direction. <laughs> it all happens by seeing the audience. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then the mind goes in a different direction. Coming back to the story, Akrura, when he gave this news and Nan Maharaj, he agreed somehow. I'm also going to go and everyone said, you're also going to go. We can't send Krishna along there. When gopis heard this, they immediately developed separation. Even though Krishna was present there, but they heard this, that Krishna is leaving. He can leave any day. Even though Krishna is present there, this is called in presence separation. Separation in presence. This is called separation in presence, in union. And there is another point which is called union in separation. This is my Gurudev's favorite topic. Union in separation, separation in union. So, when the gopis, Radharani, all the gopis heard, <coughs> Krishna is going to leave us now. Even though Krishna is still present, he's, he's not even there. They started feeling separation. This separation is, say, category C. So we have A, B, and C. And the name is given here, Bhavi Niraha. It means uh, expecting separation. Even though there is union, but This is one category. Then other category is when Krishna already left Gokul and and is in Mathur. In the separation of Krishna, you were feeling so much separation. Day and night weeping, not eating, not sleeping, not drinking, not decorating up. So you might say, this is highest degree of separation. Yes? 
because Krishna is not present here. But our Acharya Sakshara emphasis, this is not even highest, this is B category. First is what? When they just heard. When the gopis Radharani, when they just heard, Krishna can leave us any minute. Because Akrura, you know, Nanmaraj sanctioned Akrura, say we are going. Superior than this separation is when Krishna already left Gokul. Already. And now they are weeping and crying and Everyone is crying, birds are crying, peacocks are crying, parrots are crying, deer are crying, rabbits are crying, all those cows, cows, everyone is crying, trees, plants. This is even B. But the topmost separation is A. That is when actually Krishna on the chariot of Akrura and he's leaving right away right in front of the gopis. And they are holding those chariots, the reins of the horses. No, you can't go. Akrura means one who is not cruel. So Radhani said, no one can be more cruel than you. You are not Akrura, you are Krura. You are the most cruel person. You are taking our life from us. most cruel person. What is wrong? Why are you taking our life from our heart? How are we going to survive without Krishna? That's called category A, the intensity of separation. <coughs> when Krishna is leaving right in front of the world. Understand? Coming back again. C is when they just heard Krishna can leave any minute. Okay? This is close to everything. Then B is when Krishna already left. And now they are crying and weeping. This is B. But the top of separation is when Krishna on the chariot of Akrur and the gopis is holding the reins of the horses. No, you can't go. Krishna is leaving. That's the highest intensity of separation. So they they fell right in front of the chariot. If you want to leave, then you can ride this chariot on us. You don't want to survive. This is the highest separation. <coughs> Similarly, if the separation is of three kind, then union is also of three kind. C, B, and A. How the union is? Like C. First we start with C. Krishna, I told Radharani, how many of you have been Nidhuban? Nidhuban now? Okay, go there. Nidhuvan is a place of meeting place of Radha and Krishna. Every night Radha Krishna comes and they spend time there. They have Rath Lila. If you go to Vrindavan to visit this place, who knows? No one is allowed after sunset to enter that premises. Not even monkeys, birds, everyone just comes out. Yes. That's like a personal room. And Pujaris, they keep some uh, shingar, some ornaments, cup of milk, sindoor, flowers, everything. And when they open the room in the morning, they see everything is what? Disarranged. So Radha Krishna comes there. But those who are very fortunate, only they can see, otherwise no one can see. Many people try to see without the qualification, they either get blind or they die. Yes, they 
So there's a meeting place for Radha and Krishna. Krishna told Radha Rani, I'm going to come. And she decorated herself. All Shingar, Sola Shingar, 16 varieties of Shingar, head to toe. Earrings, all those, you know. Why she do Shingar? Not for herself. What is the reason? To please Krishna? Yes. When Krishna sees Radha Rani, he feels so happy. So just to give pleasure to Krishna, she decorated her. Not for any other reason. Just for the pleasure of Krishna. So her, her every movement, her every activity is to please Krishna. So she is waiting, waiting, waiting for Krishna's death who is going to come this time. So in that waiting of Krishna, there is already a union. Because you are expecting you know, like you are expecting a guest, expecting Guru Dev. Or he might come to a clock and starting from 11 or 12 or he might come any minute, he can come any time. So there is already a union. But this union is category C. There is another union above this, category B, the union when Krishna comes in the Kunja and Radha Krishna they are, they became one. Very nice tight embrace. This is called B. So then another category, category A, the union when in that tight embrace, Krishna enters in the heart of Radha. Now this is inconceivable. Mm -hmm. I embrace the Chuta Prabhu, I cannot go in his heart. Because we have cross body. <laughs> With that mood, Krishna enters in the heart of Radharani and he stole a very precious jewel which is which was locked in that chest of the heart of Radharani. This is called highest union when Krishna enters in the heart of Radharani. There's something which was in her heart, she don't want to show off, she never. She always keep hiding this because love is something to hide, not to show off. And as explained by Radha Rani in the great book Prem Sampur by Vishnu Chakra Thakur, she describes the definition of love. When you try to show off, or even when you try to say, love starts get fading. This is something to be hide, not to expose. Huh. And because it is so much uh, hidden in the core of the heart and which is a very, very special and valuable jewel for which even Krishna was, Krishna gets uh, mad to see what is that. And he also wants to touch this point or touch this point of love of Radha. And that's why he melted the heart of Radha How he melted the heart of Radha Rani? By putting Radha Rani to separation. In separation, you start melting, right? In union, it is not melting. It is more solid. But in separation, you know, we say, my heart is melting. Means more soft. Melting means it's soft. And when the heart is soft, it's very easy to touch. Or it's very easy to put anything in that heart because this already has no shape and you can shape it up. Krishna being tricky, he melted the heart of Radha Rani by saying some words, something. She started melting. And Krishna entered in that heart and stole that jewel, which was present, hidden there. And this is something everyone knows. If you steal someone's possession, we will go through reactions, right? Krishna, he stole that jewel and the moment he just touched that jewel, you know like Krishna, if he steal butter, <laughs> Krishna is sham means blackish and butter is white. So if black color touched white, what happens? 
the black also turns to white. When Krishna touched the water, what happens? He started getting. So, the moment Krishna touched that jewel which was placed in the heart of Radharani, that love, that pain, which is highest only in Radharani, was immediately lost his complexion. From blackish complexion, he turned to golden complexion. Mm -hmm. And who's that golden complexion? Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu. Mm, you try to touch that jewel, now you're going through. Now you're going to go reaction, <laughs> which is very pleasant reactions, <laughs> loving reactions. And what is that? Mahaprabhu, being Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his day and night, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare, crying and weeping, rolling on the ground, calling Krishna all the time. Where are you, Krishna? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Krishna is searching for himself. Amazing. So surprising. Krishna himself is, is searching for his own beauty. Krishna himself is chanting and extracting the nectar from his own beings. This is the potency of the love of Krishna. It means the love of Radharani. This Krishna story. So at this point, Shri is to ask, <clears throat> how, how far distance between Mathura and Vrindavan? How far distance? We used to say only two fingers <laughs> distance. <laughs> two fingers distance. So, in separation, there is union. And there is another point, union in separation. And that is, if you ever go to visit Nandaga, there is a pond, very famous, by the name Prem Sarovar. Been there before? Prem Sarovar? Mm -hmm. Let the past come there. You are making me sleep in <laughs> Frames are over. Where Radha and Krishna are sitting together. Radha is lying next to Krishna. Krishna is sitting. And the source of her lotus feet is so reddish, like a lotus flower. And naturally, the bumblebees, they always come and sit on the flowers to extract nectar. So those bumblebee, one bumblebee came to touch bewildered, seeing that this is not means bewildered that this is lotus flower, but actually that's the that's the lotus feet of Radharani. So bumblebee came to extract that nectar touching the lotus feet of Radharani. Heard the story? And then Krishna's friend, whose name was Madhumangal, very fond of eating sweets, big body. He took a stick in his hand and he chased that bumblebee away. And bumblebee chased away and he just said, Madhusudan has gone away. Another name of bumblebee is Madhusudan. And we know the Madhusudan. Krishna name is Madhusudan. Madhu means nectar and Sudan means one who is expert in extracting the nectar from the flower. That's Krishna. So Madhumangal just said, Madhusudan has gone away, means Krishna has gone away. Only by hearing this, even though Radha is just next to Krishna, she got so bewildered. She got mad. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? She is running in all the directions. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Krishna? And Krishna got confused. What is that? I am just here. Only hearing that I'm gone far, this is what's happening to her. That moment Krishna realized that in my separation, she sees me everywhere. So let me enhance her mood of more separation because then there will be more love and then there will be more union. 
that's the main reason Krishna he went to Mathura not to kill comes and all that's all secondary in her in his head there's always very big concept to please brother because her love is so high even Krishna's wife says that's why he entered in the heart to steal that because he don't possess that something he don't possess understand that's why Krishna anyway he came to Matra he killed Kamsa then the wives of Kamsa reported to their father just Jerusalem has a big army of demons keep on attacking Krishna. Krishna is very clever. Krishna was very clever. He used to kill all the demons and set Jerusalem free. And it happened not only one time, two times, four times, five times, sixteen times. And who is the elder brother of Krishna? Balaram Prabhu. He said, Krishna, what are you doing? He's troubling you so much. Why don't you kill him? Hmm. Krishna said, he smiled. He said, your smile has some reason. <laughs> your smiling means there is something. Tell me. Krishna said, oh brother, we are here in Matra to kill demons. And we don't know where are those demons situated. And all demons are friends of Jarasan. If I kill Jarasan, it will be a problem to search and kill all of them. So I just set him free and he goes and he brings all the demons together here. <laughs> it's like work from home. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. Just work from home. We are here in our home. And Jerusalem is bringing all the demons here. And we are just, I'm just killing them and killing him. And next time again he brings he collecting and bring here. Sixteen time it happened. The seventeenth time Jonathan was also acted cleverly and he brought one demon who came was who had this bone that no one in amongst the Yadavs can kill him. And Krishna is in the Yadav, that is Yadavs. When Krishna saw Kalyavan turned his back and ran away. <laughs> Any Kshatriya show his back on the battlefield considered as coward. But Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> he showed his back and ran away from there. And he's known by the name? Rancho. Hmm? Rancho. Rancho. You ever heard this? Rancho in Gujarat. How do you know? Krishna was so clever, he entered one cave where one king. This is what I wanted to start. I mean, the, my whole class centered on this. As Haripriya Sindhanvish was sitting there and he was speaking. In that cave, a king called named Muchkunda was sleeping in that cave who hurt demons when the demon, who hurt demigods when they have battled with demons. So demigods were getting defeated. So they seek protection and help from this King Mushkunda to come and help us. With the support of King Mushkunda, demons they won, demigods they won, and demons they got defeated. Naturally if you do something for someone, you feel gratitude and you want to give back something. Demigods ask Muchkunda, what do you want? We can fulfill all your desires and wish. What do you have? Any wish? He said, give me liberation. I'm tired being a king. I've done a lot. I just need liberation. Demigods said, oh, we can't give you that. Because if I don't have hundred dollars, how can I give you hundred ten? We can't give you liberation. Anything else? Then he said, okay, something similar to liberation. Now what is that? Deep sleep. 
Deep sleep is so shifty, considered as liberation. Because when you are in deep sleep, you can't, you don't enjoy your sleep. You only enjoy sleep when you get up in the morning. Then you realize, and then you feel enjoyment. Oh, I slept very good last night. But when you are in sleep, you can't enjoy your sleep because you are totally unconscious. Unconscious. So enjoyment means you have to be conscious. In unconscious state, you can't enjoy. This is called suship. It is similar to liberation. So Bhushkun Maharaj, the king said, I want deep sleep and I also want no one should disturb me. If I, if I open my eyes, that person should turn to ashes. Then we would say, okay, 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 we give you this. Okay. Bhushkun Maharaj was sleeping there. Krishna, he, he knows everything. So intentionally he came, running, Kal Yavan chasing him. And he entered this cave. So Krishna took his yellow garment, means his chadar, and he thrown on King Mujkunda. <laughs> and he hired himself. Then Kalyavan came, he hired himself. And Kalyavan came and he said, Oh Krishna, you're sleeping here. And he kicked him. Mujkunda, he opened his eyes, and Kalyavan. <laughs> Bas. His turns to ashes, huh? Bas. Bas? Okay. Okay, Bas. Bonfire. Finish. Bonfire. <laughs> Finish. So Krishna came smiling. And Mujkunda, the king Mujkunda, he saw Krishna. Oh, so my Prabhu, I'm so fortunate to see you. I'm so fortunate to have your darshans. Wow, I'm so lucky. And you start glorifying. When you adore someone, when you like someone, you start glorifying that person. Right? That's natural. Being Lord being <coughs> present in front of King Mujkunda, you start glorifying. In those verses in Bhagavatam, in those glorification, he said something very important. A very beautiful shloka. Bhava, Kovarko, Pramatoyasa. Do you know this? Learn this. Why you forget? It's important. Meaning is, King said, Oh my Lord, when the time of Jiva comes to end after repeated birth and death, he comes across a sadhu, saintly person, and an association of saintly person, while practicing Krishna Consciousness, he realizes you and he gets your mind. When the time of Jeevas comes, the cycle of repeated birth and death comes to end. Whereas, what he said is quite opposite of what actually it is. And that is when we come across a saintly person, then the cycle of birth and death comes to an end. But Mujkunda said, the reverse. Why it is so? Because this process, Acharya explains, this process takes place so fast, so fast, that instead of saying that, he said this. In the association of saintly person, the cycle of repeated birth and death comes to an end. But Mushkun Mara said, when the time of repeated birth and death comes to an end, one comes across the sadhu. It's just like when I'm saying something, I speak fast, so sometimes words get flip over. The process is so fast. Krishna said, oh, very nice, very pleased to hear this. Even though you sing, you glorify the association of sadhus in sadhu sangha, but my dear Mushkunda, you never ever perform sadhu in your life. You glorify, but you never did. So, this is Krishna, very calculated, Banya. Is very calculative. Mahaprabhu is not calculated. Mahaprabhu is very generous. Krishna is generous, but he is very calculated. If you perform 2.76.5% bhakti, 
you get blessed by 2.76.5 percent luck. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale. Exact precipitation. Very calculated. Because in a Gopa dynasty, Gopa means they have been a measure cast. That's the joking they are saying. It's not true. <laughs> Imagine a king who helped Krishna save his life. Even though he's glorifying Sadhu Sangha, Krishna is telling the king, you're glorifying Sadhu Sangha, but you never performed Sadhu Sangha in your life. So see you next life. Go and practice and do Sadhu Sangha, and I'll see you in the next life. See? If the same words would have been said by anyone in front of Mahaprabhu, Imagine what Mahaprabhu would have done. Embrace that person. And with a loving embrace of Mahaprabhu, immediately prema. Immediately receive prema. Because there's difference between Krishna and Mahaprabhu. Even though the same personality, but they're playing different roles. They're playing different moods. Sometimes when you are very happy mood, you're the same person. Happy mood, you speak differently. When you're in a stressful mood, you speak differently. When you're in a sad mood, you speak differently, but the same person. Right? Mahaprabhu is not different from Krishna, but it's different moods. The mood of Krishna is calculative mood. Calculative. Calculator. <laughs> the mood of Mahaprabhu is throw away calculators. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away that calculator. No need any calculation. No need any calculation. Mahavadanyaya. Mahavadanyaya means? Greatly magnanimous. Hmm? Greatly magnanimous. Very generous. No calculator required. <laughs> because if we start calculating, we are, we can't. <laughs> huh? We are in trouble. We can't get anything. Therefore, more than Krishna is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's very generous. Without considering path apart vicharam na purate na cham param vichyate. You're qualified or not qualified. You know the glories of Sadhu Sangha or you don't know the glories of Sadhu Sangha. You all are qualified, eligible to acquire that very rare love of Krishna. Mahaprabhu generously. He said, I brought this fruits from the eternal abode, the special abode. And I'm alone. How can I distribute all these fruits? The fruits here means the fruit of rain. So I need your help. He called upon his servants, come. And he also distribute freely. And the servants of Mahaprabhu asked, so what is the price? If you can tell us we have to sell any price for this? Mahaprabhu said, price? This is priceless. <laughs> no one can pay this. This is priceless. But any price? Mahaprabhu said, okay, Shraddha Vanjana hai Bhakti Just by seeing a little faith in someone, give this to This is little faith, not condensed faith, even very small little faith. And after being Mahaprabhu, distributing this to everyone, he also engaged his servants to distribute. And then Mahaprabhu saying, now I have to go back to my abode and I still have some tools. And I know many are not even having little faith to do. I can't take my burden back. So I'm just going to throw away. He also wants to collect. Understand? Like, I brought a suitcase with some gifts. No suitcase is empty. Suppose if I have more gifts, and if I have no one to give, what can I do? I can't take the suitcase back to India. It's a hassle, right? What I'm going to do? Anyone I see, okay, take this, take this, take this. You will be my friend or you're not my friend. Just take it. Mahaprabhu is saying, I already distributed this. 
and I'm not going to take back. So whom, to whomever I see, with qualification or non-qualification, I'm just going to throw away. So it gives off the impression. That's why we are very fortunate we are following the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to understand all these great details, the most of Vrindavan, the separation, and the Buddha. Very important. And this can happen only by chanting Mahamantra given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, anyone who worships Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this higher age is considered as Su Medasa. What is Su Medasa? Extremely intelligent. What is that word? Forget? Krishna and Krishna. How is this done again? Krishna Varnam. Krishna Varnam Krishna Krishna. Swami Gopam Rashtra Krishna. Yadke Sankirtan Gai Jajarkihi Su Medasa. In this Arnesh, this cage of quarrel and fight, one who is going to worship this golden complexion, which is not black but golden complexion, and one who is always chanting the name of Krishna, means Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, anyone who worship this incarnation, personality, <coughs> is considered as Sumedasa, which is the most extremely intelligent person. So even though we are not completely worshipping this beautiful incarnation. We are in the process to our limitations, but high expectations. We are under the category of intelligent person. We are intelligent people. Just like a child, first grade is also a student. A child of 10th grade is also a student. A child of child in second grade, third grade is also a student. In kindergarten is also a student. Child going to university also student. You know? And then now it's not child anymore in the university. <laughs> but boys and girls going to college and university also intelligent. And when they are studying for PhD, they're also student. So even though we are not very intelligent, because we have not achieved perfection yet, but we are in the line of those who are the most intelligent Sumedasa. Yeah? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Very thankful to Vinodini and Akita Kala to host this beautiful program. They really wanted to have this and I was very eager to come and see their house. Very nice. Beautiful. I like beer and I like peacock. So I see peacock on the wall. And I see beer here. Chupa. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> and uh, actually, very pleased all credit goes to her to arrange my visit here. She's, she's always. Arjun's birthday. Yeah, bring him. So I wanted to come here. I saw the price, it was so high. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, very much. Thank you You're so well. <laughs> One big Hadma Mantra for Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. May Gurudev Krishna be her. Good health, long life, devotion. Always service life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So, now the next program, 28, the center, and 29, very base here, appearance of my good morning.